Well, hello there. You know what time it is. I know what time it is. Hell, the neighbors even know what time it is. That's right, it's licensed game time. And today, we venture back to familiar grounds as we visit a galaxy far, far away in a time of console wars. My pick for the first licensed game is Super Star Wars on the Super Nintendo. This game comes with quite a reputation, but it might have slipped under your radar. And in that case, let's see what all the fuss is about. Super Star Wars is a hit. From the burning deserts of Tantooine, the maze-like interior of a sand crawler, the Moss Eisley bar, to your final confrontation with the awesome Death Star, all the action from the movie is here, but the outcome is up to you. The 16-bit era is a time that's getting a lot of love these days. I see a lot of people online saying that the fourth generation of video games is their favorite. But why is that? It has to do with the fact that the 16-bit era, and especially the arcades back then, made the most of what was possible in two dimensions. The sprite animations, the moving backgrounds, these games have actually aged very well and have become an endearing visual memory. Super Star Wars looks incredible in that sense. There is a lot of stuff going on in the background and a lot of animations happening on screen all at once. Because the game was made by LucasArts, they had access to the entire Star Wars vault of content. The designs were made based on the actual costumes and character designs. That's why there are some fun liberties being taken with monsters taken out of context. There's a boss at the end of the fourth level based upon the holographic monster from the board game you saw in the first movie. Some monster designs had their debut in this game and lived on in the expanded universe. Something a lot of Star Wars fans consider to be more important than recent canon. The Shadows of the Empire is one of my favorite stories from this era, taking place between Empire and Jedi and spawning a comic, a game and lots of action figures. The Wombats are aliens described in the first movie, but we actually never get to see them. In Super Star Wars they show up in the first level and are a major pain in the back. Obviously there were no giant scorpions in the movies, but the game has to have creative freedom and Super Star Wars excels in this category. Being a run and gun, you need enemies to shoot down, and lots of them too. The game has a lot of platform elements as well, and this is where the notorious difficulty kicks in. The game is pretty brutal and unforgiving. This is something that goes for a lot of games from that era. Games back then didn't hold your hand and didn't explain too much. If the game was too difficult, just try and learn to get better at it. A lot of fun from games back then came from figuring it out, getting skillful and then actually unlocking the game and its potential. I felt the same way when I slowly got the hang of Street Fighter 2 again. My visual purpose for this video was to take you guys on a ride through the game and how they mirror events in the movie. I love the level where you're in a sand speeder and the object is shooting down upcoming Jawas. The animations and simulated 3D effects was mighty impressive and still hold up today. Where I found myself facing problems was when I had one life left, was trying to platform myself through a difficult level and then when I thought I had finished it, I still had to beat a boss with only 40 seconds left on the clock and 25% of my health left. I tried and tried but eventually I came to the conclusion that if I wanted to progress I had to start all over. This time being very cautious about losing lives, trying to remain as much health as possible for the boss at the end and using the save state from the Redron 5 at every turn. This game seems to be designed for a turbo controller. I haven't got one yet, so I didn't get to try it, but I imagine it working best with all the platforming you have to do. A lot of the times when you are jumping from platform to platform, you get hit by a cannon in the wall and fall down, starting all over again. If you can rapid fire, removing the threats while you jump from platform to platform, I imagine this game being a little bit more forgiving. Come see a load of fun, come 
Put you on my mind Put you on my side And hope to satisfy Come to another time Put you on my mind Put you on my side And hope to satisfy Come see a little bit Super Star Wars is the perfect licensed game to me. A lot of truthfulness to the original source material with liberties being taken in the right way. The idea is not to copy the source material, but to expand upon it. Herein lies a fine line that not many developers seem to walk, but make titles like Super Star Wars all the more stand out. I hope I ever get to finish this game, but I love the way it's challenging me and makes me rethink what I love about gameplay in general. Super Star Wars gets a big A-.